Hello again and welcome to another episode of the Fun Fans Podcast. I'm your host, James Dillard. With me as always, my co-host, Bailey Jackson. How you doing, B? Hey, man. How you doing? And glad to have Ricky Sapp here today, but it is Memorial Day, so we got to wear a little something for the United States of America. So thanks yeah. for everybody who served and we'll recognize you today. Yeah, here in just a second. Yeah, it is really, really, really excited to have Coach Ricky Sapp with us. We're going to talk a little bit of ACC football at some point. We're definitely going to talk some baseball, softball, what's going on in Clemson sports. And we have another huge announcement. It seems like every show we have one huge announcement after another, but that just that just makes it even cool, makes it even cooler. But uh, before we get started, the fun fans are a proud part of the Fanboys Fangirls Sports Podcasting Network. If you're a true sports fan, the Fanboys Fangirls is perfect for you. Find various nationwide podcasts and other sports media at thefanboys.com and all platforms of social media. The Fun Fans is the official podcast for Clemson fans. And Bailey, where is our official place to dine? Uh, Ruben's Food, Sports, Spirits, and Catering, the best wings around with two locations in the upstate. There's a location in Greer at 1083 Batesville Road and 11028 Anderson Road in Piedmont. You can find them at rubensc.com, and they're just, it's just simply a great place to eat, especially for Tiger fans. Yes, sir. It's awesome. All right, so like Bailey said, this is Memorial Day, and – most of the times, if anybody watches our show, any special occasion, we normally do something silly and fun. Uh, but really, when it comes to Memorial Day, the best way to honor this, and especially if you know anything about, you know, radio, podcasting, whatever, uh, is with a moment of silence. So if you don't mind, if everybody would, we're just going to pause in honor of those that paid the ultimate price with a moment of silence. All right, thank you very much. Now, all right, so I, yeah, I don't know any other any better way to do that, and I, but I appreciate Coach Sapp's time. I appreciate him being here, and um, so we're going to introduce former Clemson and NFL linebacker and current football assistant strength coach, a 2010 draft by the Philadelphia Eagles, and my man's also a dancer, a podcast. I mean, he's just kind of a jack of all trades. Coach Ricky Sapp with us here this morning. How you doing, Coach Sapp? Man, if I was any better, I'd be y'all, man. How y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> it better yeah. you be twins. That's right. I heard that. <laughs> there you go. I heard yeah. that. Well, we're, we uh, we sent Coach Sapp a few questions, and like I said, we might add a little, little, bit, little bit. We try to have a good time. I've got one of his videos queued up. I mean, if you oh. hadn't, yeah, if you hadn't uh, seen it, any of this guy's stuff on social media, you know you're in for a good time, but just – First of all, Coach, tell us tell us how you ended up back at Clemson as the strength coach. Well, uh, three years prior, I was working at St. James High School, you know, where I was coaching high school football and uh, running the weight room. And I always wanted to get, you know, into the college uh, college weight room and get some experience. So two years ago now, I guess, reached out, you know, to Coach Sweeney and, you know, kind of put it in his ear and, I started the job last year in January, so uh, it's definitely been exciting to be on this side of it. But it's more exciting just to be back home with the Clemson family. I heard that. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you said you cut, you worked in the weight room in, in high school. Well, we, we're both high school people. Uh, I'm an athletic director and 27 years in, and I've seen some of the best strength coaches working in high schools. Uh, but we – it's a it's a full time year round job, and um, I mean I know you know that, but when you went back to if you could think back to when you were being recruited, what what made you pick Clemson University? Man, you put me on the spot on this one. Well, you know when I was being recruited, uh, long story short, you know Clemson wasn't really you know a top school for me, but what ended up happening was I kept coming back, and every time I left, I would tell my high school coaches, I'm like, man. It feel if something something it feel pretty good when I go there. So I kept coming back and I fell in love with the place, man. I had you know an, uh, amazing recruiters that recruited me, and uh, it definitely worked out uh, really well for me. Yeah, that sound that's a very common answer, isn't it, Bailey? There's just yeah. something about it, it feels good when you're there. It's we you agree. Feel. We agree. Yeah, we, we definitely <laughs> agree. Agree. I was not even recruited now. Coach, this is this is the bonus question, the one we didn't send you, so I definitely don't mean to put you on the spot. But like Bailey said, he and I are both former high school 
coaches and we've moved into administration nice. and that hype video that rolls the team into the fourth quarter in death Valley is just like, I mean, it's right up your alley, I'm sure. Yeah. And that quote where you don't put rings on soft hands. If, if I've told, I, you know, that's the perfect quote. If I told high school kids, you know, something very similar for years and years and years. And a lot of times that just don't seem to sink in with high school kids mm. at the level you're at now, these, these high level, very, very talented, very highly recruited college kids. Has that finally sank in with these kids? I think so. I think definitely when you see the success that, you know, Clemson football has had, I think coming in, you know, they know that, hey, <laughs> you got to put in the work, you know, you're not going to put the, those rings on a, on smooth hands. So what Coach Sweeney and his amazing staff has created was a culture of, you know, the best is the standard, you know, so – I think that they have a very good understanding of you do not put rings on smooth hands. <laughs> so you gotta, you gotta put the work in. So I think, they, I think they definitely get it. Yeah. I'm trying to get my daughter's a rising junior volleyball player and she's yeah. just get her in the weight room and as, as much as we possibly can. She does. She does pretty good. I gotta give her, okay, her a little bit good. of credit. So good. I'm sure everyone asks you this question. I know when I was doing the research course, I remember watching you play, Love watching. It's just so exciting to watch uh, players like yourself play as a Clemson fan. But you were you were there when the Bowden era ended and the Dabo era began. This might be a little different type question because this is a podcast about how fun it is being a fan. Mm -hmm. That Bowden Bowl stuff was so hype. And even though when it first started, I mean, we were getting our tails handed to us, but let's just be honest, when it first started, uh, but it was hype. I mean, it was hyped up. It was all over ESPN. It oh, hard yeah. to get a ticket and all this kind of stuff. What was that like as a from a player standpoint? W was it was it any extra hype around that game, or was it just like another game for you guys? Man, I think it was. It was definitely like you know some some hype with it. You know, especially that week going into it. You know, and Coach Bowden didn't he didn't overdo it by talking about it. We knew what it was. He playing his dad, and we had to come with it. He wanted to beat his dad. You know, that was it. So right. anytime, you can, anytime you can beat Florida State, I mean, come on. Right. So I think the fact that it was against his dad, who, you know, who who was a legendary coach, it just made it that better. So uh, we definitely enjoyed the hype around it. <laughs> and we enjoy all the hype. Yeah. And yeah, now I mean, everything's hype. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, from a player standpoint, um, you were there when they we went through a mid-season transition uh, mm -hmm. from Coach Bowden to Coach Swinney. What was what was that like as a player? Man. It was definitely it was definitely a tough moment because Coach Bowden recruited a lot of us, if not all of us. You know, he definitely recruited me. You know, sitting in my mom, my parents' living room recruited me. So it was definitely a tough moment uh, to see him go. Um, but I think the best thing they did was they brought in a coach that was already on the staff mm -hmm. who we knew and we knew what he would bring to the table. So, you know, it was, it was, it, it was almost like, Hey, we just handed it off to another family member. Right. So um, we transitioned, you know, pretty well with coach Sweeney because we knew who he was and the older guys on the team did a very good job of also helping and keeping us, you know, keeping us focused and um, looking ahead at what we had to get done. So it was definitely a hard transition, but I think we were, I think it did the right thing by bringing in a guy that we already knew really well. Well, hindsight now, they definitely brought in the right guy. <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah. But a lot of, a lot of folks give credit to former players uh, laying a foundation for the success, you know, players like mm -hmm. yourself, Taj Boyd, et cetera, et cetera, laying the foundation for the national championship. And you know, some folks give credit to coach Bowden about how he, he kind of turned the program around to a certain extent. Uh, and you could say he laid a foundation uh, for Dabo. And even Bailey and I have talked before, if you really think about it, you could go back to what Coach Ford and those folks did as far as being able to build up the program and building up the boosters and, and that type thing. And, you know, I personally, I think all of that kind of lends to the success that any program has later on. That Do you feel that? Well, I mean, as a player, you were a part of that and part of those transitions. Do you – feel that way yourself well definitely i think definitely as, as i as i got older i was like man you know the, the the guys that came before us they set the foundation 
And then when I was playing, I didn't really, you know, when you when you're playing, you don't really think about it. But when I was playing with such amazing players like CJ Spiller and Cullen Hopper and all those guys, we were setting the foundation for the next for the next uh, uh, guy. So um, just blessed to be able to say that I was part of, uh, you know, one of these Clemson football teams that was able to lay a little brick on the foundation, <laughs> you know, and now these guys are taking it up and high and high and high. So it's definitely amazing to see, man. It really is. Definitely. Yeah, what would you say as a player? What's your what's your favorite memory as a player? Well, of course, my first game in, in Death Valley, man. I remember we played Florida Atlantic, uh, my first game in Death Valley. And I was playing behind the late, great Gaines Adams. Mm-hmm. And my first play going in, I run in and I look in the stands and my dad and my mom stands up. And this is how I'll never forget. My dad stands up and he does this. <laughs> And I'm like, what? what? <laughs> it's coming. I'm like, what is? What are you doing, Dad? Well, in that moment, I, you know, I didn't really think about it. But uh, man, that's a special moment for me, man. To run in my first first ever play at Clemson, and to see my mom and dad stand up, and my dad do that with his hands, and uh, that's my favorite moment, man. It really is. That's awesome. Well, that's, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's awesome. So, but as a as a player thinking back to those days when you were at Clemson and once again, this being a podcast about being a, a fan, did you attend other athletic events? Do you go to basketball games, baseball games or anything like that? Well, I dated an amazing, beautiful woman that played college basketball. So I, <laughs> I went All to, right. yep. I went to uh, a good amount of college basketball games and uh, you know, it was always good to go, go to those. We would definitely walk by some baseball games and check those out. So Jacoby and CJ ran track, so we would definitely go watch them win and then leave. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was there yeah. any person on earth faster than Jacoby? For I, I mean, don't so. I don't that so. dude <laughs> was ridiculous. It made practice fun, man. It was so fun practicing with those guys. <laughs> I yeah. bet. I bet. Yeah. And a lot of folks we get once again. A lot of folks we get on here, Bailey. They, Talk about going to the baseball. Everybody loves – we used to really enjoy going to baseball games. We were we were students. Well, that was good times. Yeah, well, I, I, I later I fell in love with uh, Jack Leggett, man. I'm a huge oh, Jack yeah. Leggett fan. I love that dude, man. So, yeah. Hoping to go this weekend. Just well, it, just, it, it shows you what he meant to a lot of people because they brought him back to work oh, with yeah. the team. Love that this dude. year. But So, some of those guys you mentioned, you still keep in touch with them? The Spiller, I mean, obviously, C.J. Spiller's right there with you. The James Davises of the world, Jacoby Ford. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, We do a pretty good job keeping in in touch with all those guys, man. We really do. Yep. That's that's cool. All right, so we're going to talk about some things outside of football. Like I said uh, before, Coach Sapp is also a motivational speaker, podcaster, let me let me see, let's see what I got right here. Let me just show the show the fans if they don't haven't already seen. Oh man, what is this? Is something good? Oh. This is my favorite. Yeah, I found this one. This was great. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Old oh, school. Yeah. Oh, teaching the kids. This is my secret to dance, man. <laughs> oh man. It's an amazing running job. man. I mean, you can't go wrong with the running man. But watch this little girl. She comes in and kills it. I think the little girl she comes in. What are you doing? What are you doing? Not her. Another girl comes in. Kills it. Here she goes. Kills it. Watch her. Got to slide down. Oh, That's amazing. Good stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, helping the kids out. Uh, oh, I need to stop this. And like I say, I'm doing all this by myself. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So how did you get into the – what made you get into the – I know you, you ended up high school for a little while uh, to the – doing stuff with the kids and all the dancing and stuff. Well, long story short, I was transitioning out of the NFL, and I was in the weight room with the Quan Bowers, and this coach from North Myrtle Beach High School came and asked us to come speak. And we like, mm-hmm. all right, you know, we'll do it. Anyway, we go and speak leave he asked me to come be a volunteer coach i'm like no i'm not doing that i play football so he asked me again i went and i went and did it and uh what ended up happening at north Myrtle beach high school was god showed me what my purpose was it was to encourage kids and work with kids and then right after that he was like 
you need to be doing motivational speaking. And I'm like, what? I, I took speech classes. I stuttered. Like, no, I don't do that. So anyway, that's that's kind of how I figured it out, man. You know, working with kids that my purpose was mm -hmm. to uh, work with them and and to travel the world and and and, and tell them a, a speech. We'll, we'll give them a speech. Amen. And then, yeah. And then, it, then I became the dancing motivational speaker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bailey, would the kids at Clover benefit more from the dancing or the speak speeches, you think? Either, either one. Either, either. one. <laughs> hey, hey I'm ready. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah the kids at, kids at my school, I don't know. They, they're a little shy sometimes. But uh, is there anything I'm, else? What, what are we missing? So you got Talk To Me Tuesdays is the name of his podcast. And I've listened to that. And I'm telling you, don't have the volume up too high, by the way, especially when he first starts. <laughs> If you're gonna check this thing out, but uh, well, first, man, I gotta, I gotta say thank you, man. For I appreciate you checking it out. Yeah, I got my podcast. It's called Talk to Me Tuesday Podcast. It's a motivational podcast where I come on and I do sing a little bit. But I, I, uh, I just try to encourage people, man. Yep, I do it every Tuesday. Yep. Well, so I don't mess it up. I obviously it's on Spotify and whatnot. Where, where should folks go if they want to find your your material or be in, be able to contact you for a motivational speaking gig? So I'll, I have my own website and it's called uh, rickysap.com. Uh, okay. So you can go on there and uh, and contact me. I also have my own nonprofit foundation. It's called the Ricky Sap Foundation as well. And you can go on there and request me to come speak as well. Very good. We'll post all the, we post all the links all right, that we talk you. about during the show every time we, we post the show. And uh, I mean, this, should, we ask everybody, we forgot there for a while. I don't know what happened, but there was a certain question that we were asking all our fans just semi as a joke, mainly because my students at my school were asking me why they were asking me if I could do the gritty. I don't know, but it transferred over to our podcast. We were asking our, our guests, can they do the gritties? Now, I know good and well, coach Ricky. Sapp I'm pretty sure he can do it. Can do the gritty. I can definitely do the gritty, but only because the kids have showed me how to do it. So I can definitely do it. <laughs> definitely. I think that's true. All right, so, okay, definitely putting you on the spot here, so feel free to say no. Is there any way we get you to do the gritty for us, Rip? Some of oh, our man. fans don't even know what hey, the gritty you, is. Let me tell you something, man. We got something. an expert on the show today. Let me tell you something, man. I am the dancing motivational yeah. speaker. Anytime yeah. you ask me to dance, I'm going to dance, man. So there you I, go. I can get the gritty for you a little bit, man. You ready? Anybody didn't know what the gritty Here we go. Here we go. Here's the gritty. Then you can pause with it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. All right. I that's my, good I right there. <laughs> you are the first a... guest that's actually done the gritty on the podcast. Hey, congratulations! Hey. Never met a strength coach that was not high energy, so I'm. I was really looking forward to that. It's about yeah. pointless if you got a strength yeah. coach that's not high energy. Right. Well, yeah, got to have it. Coach, we appreciate you you coming on the show. Bailey and I will be. Let's see, we're in that first section lined up with the end zone when you come out. Which, which, wait a minute, the team's going to come out a little different this year. A bit different, yeah, right, right under the uh, – yep. Well, we're still over, we're over there on the right, about halfway up the lower bowl. We'll be hollering for you if you get a chance. And supposedly, what's the deal if uh, we had um, we had a kicker on here and if he hits a six – if he pin, no punter, if he pins the other team in inside the five on our – on our on that west end zone, I'm supposed to do the gritty, so I don't. It's kind of a yeah. deal. Aiden Swanson was on. Aiden Swanson, yeah, he's yeah, he hey, he can do it too. He go do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he go do it. So if you see us, if you hear somebody hollering, and uh, we're just cheering for you, just like we're cheering for all the players and big time okay. Tiger fans, graduates back in the '90s, and um, we appreciate you being on. I don't, I don't know any other way to thank you more than just to say thank you again for sure. Yeah, thank we appreciate it. Man. Thank you for having me, fellas. All right. Good luck to you. And go Tigers. Here. How cool was that? Good guess. Awesome. So I mean, I mean, I figured I figured he would do the gritty. But oh yeah. And but see, that kind of steps it up. Should we start asking any of our other guests to also well, do I the mean, gritty? he was able just to be mobile just, right there, just go straight to the dance floor. But uh I don't know, it depends on who the guest is. Yeah, I think it definitely would depend on who the guest is. All right, well, just – oh, man, that was that was cool. All right, but before we go – well, we're not going. We got to get on to our normal stuff. Just a quick reminder about Wayne Buckingham's fundraiser coming up the first weekend in August. Let me get my, my little graphic going here. It's going to be a tailgate and a gala and some golfing. 
going on. And listen, the bottom line is Tim Ray has said that this will be a historic event because this is the first time so many of these guys have been back in one place at one time. Horace Grant, Dell Davis, LeVon Kirkland, Michael Dean Perry, Coach Danny Ford, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on and on. Like I said, we'll post the links to this along with some other stuff that we talk about during our show. But if you don't have a $50 ticket, you need to get it. If you would like to be a sponsor, we can also help you with that, uh, along with the WAB alumni fundraising situation, the Orange and White Weekend. All right. Also, another reminder, we are Channel 24 on WSB. We're on the TV. We're on the TV. So that's kind of cool. And uh, there's there's some other little things in, in the works there, maybe on some other platforms. But uh, as we roll into our normal sports updates, it's always good to be able to announce championship, baby. Woo. That's it. There's no doubt champion. that Clemson baseball is the hottest baseball team in America with 20, uh, 21 out of their last 22 games they have won. Uh, they are now ranked number four. And I want you to think about this. At the start of May, they were not ranked in the top 25 by Baseball America. And now they're four. They were 17 and 14 their first 31 games in there since April 7th. They are 26 and three. All right. So, and it is a fun team to watch. Um, and they have what many have called, if you're not familiar, James, you know, uh, Mr. Shohei Otani that plays for the Angels? Uh, no, I do not. Oh, well, I didn't think you would. So that's why I mentioned <laughs> him. Plays first base, he DHs any pitches. So his okay. numbers are similar to Babe Ruth's in oh, his wow. first couple of years. So Caden Grice also does the same thing for Clemson, and he's been called the Sho- Shohei Otani of college baseball, and that is a huge compliment because Otani's like just a freakish baseball player, and Grice is, Grice is pretty good too. Could uh, they just then, shorten it to Shohei? Or, Otani. Or, Otani. Is that two names? All, uh, he pitched in the All-Star game, and he was in the home run derby. You never see that. Yeah, that all is right, so that's anyway, pretty amazing. All right. Uh, Lady Tiger softball, if you watch the game Saturday. No, wait a minute. Yeah. Baseball. Two more, one more thing. I have oh, a. Oh, sorry. Besides the fact that I was kind of nervous on the winning streak, it was like, you know how baseball is. I've kind of bound to lose, quote unquote, and they didn't super impress. But did you know that the only ACC team to have a first year coach win the ACC championship is Clemson? And not only that, the past three coaches have done it. Correct. That's pretty crazy. And Bill, Bill Wilhelm, nineteen fifty-eight, Monty Lee, Jack Leggett, and now Coach Backich. Backich, and we are hosting. Yes, hosting. We are. We're like Bailey said, we're number four in some polls, and we're projected to be definitely in the top eight as far as seating goes. Well, they've already and announced that. Um, we are hosting. Noon today is when the the entire field will be set. Yep. But. But so as a top eight seed, if you win your regional, you get to host super. Yep. The super regional. So, hey, one step at a time. But Omaha's looking like something um, that that's a reality. And like I said early in the year, man, it was like they're two and eight in ACC play. First Definitely day, was not looking like this type of season early in the year. But we, I hope to be there, Bailey. Maybe we maybe we're gonna be there this weekend. And get some tickets and watch some baseball and do some tailgating, do a little fun fan action. All right. All right. Softball. All right. Softball had Oklahoma beat twice. <laughs> had them. Saturday and would, would have forced an elimination game. That doesn't mean they would have beat them in the third game. Correct. But had it down to up three with two outs and two strikes and gave up. If the fence was 206 feet, she hit it 209. Yeah. Um, you know. But that's that's why Oklahoma's Oklahoma. I mean, that's a tough place to play, and there's no guarantee you would have won the third game. But, but you know, Clemson's yep. only in their fourth year uh, of existence, so it's that's amazing right. what they've done. Two really really good softball teams. That that was also some good games to watch. It would have been really cool to see a third game in that one. But definitely hats off to the Lady Tiger softball team for an outstanding season. And the bottom line is they've played the best team in the country the past two years. So the, you know, as coaches, we say the good thing about it, they know where they need to be. They know 
you know, they see what it takes, et cetera, et cetera. And, and that's they're true. very, very close. Yeah, there's a lot of truth to that, and you're correct. They're very, very close. Now, two questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, one's a question. Are there is it is it just easier to hit a home run in softball? Are there just there's more home runs in college softball? There were a good handful in the baseball games too, but it's like every time somebody steps up to the plate, you, I mean, they could tie it. Well, I mean, you know, get, James, the fence is only two hundred and five feet. Well, but that's all that's feet. physics though. The ball is also bigger and softer and blah yeah, blah. Yeah, but blah. if you bear if you barrel up a softball and you get some a little bit of lift on it, hit the bottom third of the ball. <laughs> So in other words, uh, yes, the answer, yeah, okay, that's what yeah, I thought. Yeah, these now, girls, these are the best softball players in the. Oh, they're country. killing it. They're Some killing of the best it. in the world. Well, so, and the, did you watch? Is it just me or they reviewing? Which they kind of did it with baseball too. Did they have they increased the reviews because it's postseason? Yeah, or I mean, you, I mean, let's get if we got if we have a review system, let's get it right. Now, Major I, League Baseball, I watch a ton of Major League Baseball, and. um their review system is all in New York. It's just like football, just like NBA, mm -hmm. whatever. And it, it's very quick. Like, it's it's super quick. Um, and, like, at Clemson – or when Clemson was playing at, like, I think Virginia Tech, there was a couple reviews. They had to go, like, all the way into the building mm. and then all the way back out. So, that does take time. But, hey, they reviewed Will Taylor's home run yesterday. And it, good thing they did because the guy touched it. Oh, yeah. Even right though the Miami fan was like, I didn't touch it. Yeah. And you did. <laughs> he was famous there for a bit. Speaking of being a fan, well, I just – I don't know. I I agree and but wish they'd do it quicker, faster. Is there a limit? Or they just review whatever they think they want to review? The I, coaches have I, to call for it? I'm not I sure about so that. I don't think so in the NCAA. I think it's um, – you know, I, I do know in Major League Baseball, the coach has a challenge. He'll say, I want you to challenge it. Challenge Um. And if you win, you keep it. If you lose, you don't have another one. Ah. But these are generated by the the umpire crew most of the time. Gotcha. Well, I do agree with, with getting it right. All right, last spring sport. We've talked a little bit about the Lady Tiger golf team. The team, they were finishing the tournament during our last show. They did not advance, but Savannah Gruel, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, advanced as a, as a singles player and ended up finishing 48th which in golf is pretty good. But the key thing is uh, this was the best finish and the best round in an NCAA national by a women's tiger golfer like ever. So congratulations to Savannah on that one. So that's awesome. And then we have a little bit of winter sports news coming out this week. I guess you heard about that. Yeah. I mean, PJ Hall was always coming back. You I think mean, so? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You declare for the draft. So you can go take part in the NBA combine. All right. So he goes for three or four days and he works out with all these potential NBA guys to see where he is. Like a camp. In the process. It's just like a camp, a high level camp. And if you're not, there's only two rounds in the NBA. There's only two right. rounds. Right. All right. So if you're not going to be in the, in the first round or high second round, you normally come back. Right. And so now, all right, if you ask me about basketball, I got basketball info. Let's hear right. it. So you add P.J. Hall back to the mix. That's uh, 17 and a half points a game. They and have, the, hold up. We've had some portal stuff. Chase right? Hunter, all right. who was the point guard last year, is a, a. I think he's a future pro. Yep. All right. Shifflin's back, Godfrey's back, Dylan Hunter's back, Beetle has significant playing time. And then you add Joe Girard from Syracuse, who has major ACC experience and was the sixth leading scorer in the ACC last year at 17.8 points a game. He's on the Jerry West watch list for best point guard in the country. Wow. You had Jack Clark, who is a 6'9 wing, who started 17 games at NC State last year and averaged almost 10 points a game. You have Jake Hydebreeder, or Breder, who averaged 15 and a half points a game last year as a soft, as a freshman at Air Jake. Force. And he, he was a Mountain West all-conference selection. Awesome. And then you add a big man from UNC Greensboro. His name is Boss Leite. 
He's from overseas, but he's 6'10", and he basically replaces Middlebrooks, who left to go to NC State. So, And then they have a high-level freshman coming in, Asa Thomas. And so the future is so bright, I need to wear shades. Can't wait. Nice Looking time. forward to it. Guess who else's future is bright? Jay Doos. Jay Do, MC, entertainer, entrepreneur, pep rallies, corporate events, game shows, fundraisers, galas, etc. Just put that man on the mic and let him liven up the party. Not only is Jay Do a friend of mine, I've seen him work. You and your organization will not be disappointed anytime you add Jay Do to your function. You can find him at itsjdo.com and on all forms of social media at itsjdo. Now, just a couple of other updates outside of the athletic field and or court. We kept our eye on what the ACC ADs did down there in Miami, and the, actual, the board of directors have has voted on one of the just one of the little topics they were talking about. And I don't not really getting into the details, but the postseason money, not the not the TV revenue, everybody gets the money, money. They're still going to split that evenly, but they have decided to change how they distribute the postseason earnings. So the ones that make it to the postseason will get some versus ones that don't, and depending on playoffs versus a bowl game, et cetera, et cetera, right. you should get more money. So that should benefit. I mean, it just kind of makes sense. You're going to benefit the teams that brought the money into the conference, and I don't know how much difference it'll be, but uh, – that's a little step in what I think may be in the right direction. But real quick, they also came out as this is not new as far as they're not having two divisions. The ACC's not having the two divisions next year. The schedule's been – that's been announced. The schedule's been out for a while. But so how do they decide who's going to play in the ACC championship game? It's going to be the team with the best record. They've come out with the tiebreakers. So we'll take a look at these real quick. Obviously, head-to-head -head competition. Okay, and if they play each other, you don't really need number two, right? Correct. Yeah, once you once you clear one of these, you don't don't need the next one. Win percentage versus all common opponents. Okay, win percentage versus common opponents based on their order of finish, overall conference win percentage with tie broken and proceeding through other. So hopefully, we never make it to number three because I'm confused now. Well, I mean, look, we do that in high school now. It's just not worded like that. Okay. So you you figure out how many you know one through six in your conference, and you get a point value if you beat the number two team or you beat the number three team. Same thing, All right? It's just worded differently. Combined win percentage of conference opponents. Okay. Okay. The tied team with the higher ranking by the team rating score metric provided by Sports Source Analytics, following the conclusion of regular season games. Okay. So this is this is where I really do have a question. If we're really trying to understand this and we're only going to spend about 30 more seconds trying, we should you should never, ever, 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 ever need a number six because if you've gone to some poll right. and how the sports sorts analytics got to be that poll, it whatever, there's there's gotta be one team ahead of the other, right? Well, yeah, they're never gonna get to number six. They're never gonna get to number five. Never gonna really. Hopefully, never get to number three. Yeah, I mean, it's just they have they have to be in there in case it does happen. That's and, right. And like as a high school AD, I can tell you, there's a five and six on our tiebreakers for all of our sports, and only rarely have we gotten to that point. Like matter of fact, one sport this year didn't have a number four, and we needed it. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. We we almost about... needed it. If somebody had beaten somebody on the last night, we would have needed another a meeting to decide how we were going to do that i was about to ask how far down the list you've ever been and so you exhausted a three three bullet list yeah huh? yeah what do you do coins we do some coin tosses i know we're not i'm, I'm, I'm not a i'm not a fan of flipping a coin right for a playoff spot okay that's right you you mean you could you could go play this team versus this team based on your seat uh we're gonna build in time at the end to play it we're right gonna, we're gonna Everybody's going to put on their stuff. We're going to go play the game. Try to play it off. That's right. I like that much better. Neutral site. Come use the uh, Blazers gym. That's always right. good. We'll open the concession stand. Right. All right. Well, one one kind of last thing on, on the note of Memorial Day. We haven't mentioned our partnership with uh, Homes for Troops recently, but th what better day than Memorial Day to, to bring that back up again. If you go to thefanboys.com, 
website, you scroll to the bottom, you can see how you can help us help build homes for troops. And we do appreciate being, or we're proud to be a part of that and would appreciate any other support given. So the fanboys.com scroll to the bottom and you will see how you can help with that. And just kind of one more thing, Bailey, have you ever been to Arlington cemetery? Yes. It's something else. This is a picture I took myself last spring. Uh, we were up there with my daughter in grad school. We're looking for, um, apartments and we saw the changing of guards but highly recommend and anything like that if you get in that area get the opportunity and it just it'll give you a feeling that uh that you kind of might not want but it's probably one we all need as we celebrate our freedom every day yeah and, here in the and United briefly States briefly i this this weekend is a big weekend for me personally with a group that I'm in and we do a, a golf tournament every Memorial day. And we have a veteran that speaks uh, Saturday night at our, our dinner. And uh, he reads a little, um, he always reads something different every year, but he wants, he challenged us to get our kids to understand why Memorial day is celebrated, mm -hmm. uh, how it started, why we do it. And, and then what it means to veterans, you know, some veterans, we celebrate on Memorial Day, and they, it's really a day of of reflection morning. and mourning mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. uh, so just keep that in mind and, and tell your kids, if you're out there listening, what it's all about. And I told my son this morning, I said, "What do you know what Memorial Day is all about? And he said, well, not not really. I said, well, I'll tell you later. You know, yeah. So um, good stuff. Agreed. 100% agreed. All right, speaking of other good stuff, we are going to give away a koozie. Let's thanks in part to our friends at Diamond Edge Products. And then put the hat back on for Memorial yeah. Day. There you they go. They have mastered the diamond laser engraving process, and they can put almost any design on items such as license plates, yard signs, tumblers, water bottles, and more for a high quality, forever lasting custom engraved product. Check out Diamond Edge Products at diamondedgeproducts.com and you can email Jalen J-A-Y-L-I-N at Diamond Edge Products for more questions or to order or to get your Fun Fans merchandise. Fun Fans merch keeps cold stuff cold and hot stuff hot. All right, and this week's koozie goes to drum roll please. Drum roll. Rebecca Peeler. Rebecca, congratulations. Thank you for doing Part of the Fun Fans uh, Network listening audience, and I will be reaching out to Rebecca Peeler very soon to get your mailing information so I can get you your koozie. Now, one last huge announcement that I just, well, I knew it was in the works, but I just got permission to announce it last night. Speaking of Diamond Etch Products, Diamond Etch Products is now an, an officially licensed partner for Clemson University merchandise. And this is just a couple examples I threw together on a collage, a few license plates. I'm talking about high quality stuff and same thing with the tumblers and the water bottles and this type thing. So there are up to 23 items so far that they are able and approved to produce. So these definitely are just a small sample and you can find more of these. You can email Jalen and you can, there's also a link to a website that we will post, like I say, when I post all this other stuff. So congratulations to one of our sponsors, Diamond Etch Products. They'll have a table set up at uh, the Orange and White Fundraiser in August. But you do not have to wait till then to get your officially licensed Clemson merchandise from Diamond Etch Products. Awesome. So, man, what a great show. Rick Coach Sapp, that was awesome. Did the gritty for us. He was good. Big things going on with Clemson baseball. We're all caught up with the spring sports. And uh, next week, we plan to be back at our normal time, Sunday at 8 p.m. So thanks again for checking us out each and every week. Don't forget to click and subscribe on your favorite platform. We're on all the podcast platforms and social media, YouTube, et cetera, at Fun Fans Podcast. Make sure you subscribe. We're going to continue to bring you great shows with great fans. Hope everyone has a wonderful Memorial Day. And on behalf of the Fun Fans Podcast, Jay Thriller Entertainment, the Fanboys Fangirls Podcast Network, and Bailey Jackson, 
It's only 99 days till football kickoff. Go Tigers. Go Tigers.